Ladies and gentlemen, how the devil are we all doing? It's that guy with the unbearable accent, and welcome to this Fallout 76 build tutorial. Now, if you've had the misfortune of being subscribed to my channel for a while, you may actually recognise this build. However, there's a load of new shit come out since last time I did it, so I thought I'd remake it. Anyhow, enough knobbing around, let's get into it. Now the first thing we're going to need is a decent camp location, and I've chose here just near the Wayward. It's nice flat land, it's near a road, and you can intimidate new players with your building prowess. Simply, simply lovely. Right then, now we've got our location sorted, let's start doing the build. The first thing we're going to need to do is place down our foundations. This bit is really simple, I mean Jesus Christ, if I can do it, any bugger can. What we're trying to achieve, ladies and gents, is a 4x3 rectangle. Now, the only thing you do need to take into account is how high your foundations are. You want them as low to the ground as possible. I'm talking little John low. You know, we, we don't want to be seeing these buggers once the build's completed. Right, so have we got all that finished? Is this what you've been left with? It is? Absolutely fantastic. Let's move on to the next step. Now again, this next step, dead simple. You're going to want to take one of these cheaty boys, also known as a catwalk. Now these things are magical if you didn't know. You can do all kinds of mad stuff with them, apart from use them as catwalks. Well, you can use them as catwalks, but where's the fun in that? A anyhow, I digress. You're going to snap this catwalk piece to this foundation here. Obviously when you've removed this foundation. Once you've snapped in your catwalk piece, you're going to grab yourself another flory boy and snap it to said catwalk. And what have we achieved with this, ladies and gents? Well, apart from giving myself repetitive strain syndrome from saying catwalk so many times, we now have an offset foundation. Who brilliant's that? Now, don't you worry, Mon Petit Fleurs, if you don't have the catwalk piece. You can do this by eye. It's just a little bit more tricky, and you're guaranteed at least half an aneurysm. You know, it, it, it does get on your tits after a while. However, once you've got that foundation into an offset position, we're ready to move to the next step, which is quite simply placing down some walls. Now, you don't need to put them all around your build at this point. You just need enough to put in some slopey boy roof pieces, and in the middle of them, these little pointy triangular shaped roof piece things I, I don't know the technical name of them now like i said ladies and gents don't be putting walls down on every foundation just follow what i'm doing here because if you place them down everywhere you are going to hinder yourself in the long run it's also very important we get these roof pieces in because once they're all in place and we're left with something like this we're going to pull out our bernie boy 1200 and we're going to destroy this particular roof piece right here this roof piece right here can you see it perfect fantastic brilliant let's go right then so once you've got all of that done you've got that roof piece burnt you should be left with something like this let's move on at this point we need to move both of these foundations forward to match up with our offset foundation this is just to allow us to flip our walls the opposite way on our church tower yes there's other methods but in this situation it's the easiest way we're going to start by putting down half walls right here and here and then on top of these we're going to put down full size walls once you've got the full size buggers in place snap some bloody vines to them Mm-hmm. Yep, simply, simply lovely. Now, once you've got your vines down, change both of these wall pieces into doorways and simply remove them. What you will be left with, Mon Petit Fleurs, is some floating vines, and that is exactly what we're after. You can now remove your half walls and in their place, put down some full-size walls, just like this. Beautiful. Jobs are good. Right then, so now your walls are down, all you're going to do is make sure they're facing wallpaper side out and then place down another set of vines like this. Now you may be wondering to yourself, TNG, why have you done all that? Well, it's quite simple. The vines come to a rather unnatural stop at the top of a wall piece and of course you can't snap the vines to half wall pieces so by doing it this way we're giving it a little bit more of a natural feel i hope you'll see what i mean as the build progresses along anyhow from here we're going to turn these walls into doorways and we're going to move these two foundations back to the previous position and then once that's done, we can start building up our tower. It's literally going to be one full-size wall that you've already got down. On top of that, a half-size wall. And then on top of that, another full-size wall. Now, for some reason, I can't remember why I haven't put the front on yet. So, yeah, j just follow this tutorial as you see it. You never know. You could put the front on and cause yourself an absolute kick in the penis further in the video. So, so yeah, just follow it and you should be left with something like this. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so now it seems we're moving on to the front, and it looks like we're using the same process of what we used on the sides. Just as a recap, place down a half wall, place a full-size wall on top of that, snap your vines to it, change the wall piece into a doorway, 
remove said doorway, remove the half wall that it's sitting on top of, and then place down a full-size wall and then snap your vines to it, jobs are good and whew, fantastic. Now again, just as a little side note, I'm using the Pittsburgh building set and I want the wallpaper side facing outwards. So to get these walls to flip the right way around, I've just placed down a foundation here, which will, you know, allow me to do that. Again, it's exactly the same as what we've done on the sides. If you're using a different building set or you just don't give a shit, then you really don't need to do that process. Anyhow, that should be your tower near enough complete, which means we can finish up doing the walls on the rest of our build. Now, on our front two walls here, we are going to be putting slopey boys down on top of full-size wall pieces, which means when we use our vine trick, because yep, we're going to be doing that again, the vines are going to stick out over the slopey boy, but you know, j just don't worry about that. We'll either bury our heads in the sand and totally ignore it, or we'll find a way to mask it a little bit. Now then, after a couple of minutes hard work, you should be left with something like this. Doesn't it look fabulous? Hi, of course it does. Starting to take shape now. I like it. From this point forwards, the church is plain sailing. We can fill in our last two open gaps that we've got on the sides here with just some normal full-size wall pieces. There's no vine trickery needed on this one. We can also put in our final two roof pieces and repair the dodgy one that we've got destroyed in the middle. Mm-hmm, yep, simply, simply lovely. And to top it all off, let's put a little pointy triangular boy on top of our tower. And sod it, while we're up here, let's change these doorway pieces into window pieces. Beautiful. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it done for the structure. Now, of course, we do need to go around and add a little bit of decor to it. So let's start off on the top of our tower here. We'll throw down a couple more vines. Why the bloody hell not? But let's mix it up a little bit. We'll only put them down on the front and on one side. Yeah, perfect. While we're at it, we might as well move back this offset foundation and snap another one in front of it. So we've got a little porch area. Mm-hmm, simply, simply lovely. And with that moved, we can actually change these two doorways into full wall pieces. Beautiful. Now along our side walls, I'm just going to use a mixture of placing down vines over the walls. Yes, every single wall piece is going to have a vine on it. However, I am going to break it up a little bit. I'm going to throw in some defensive junk walls like this here, just to give it a little bit more texture, I think the right word is. And by God, would you look at that. If you use the thick with two C's vine set, it will actually show through the defensive wall. Yeah, I quite like that effect actually. Let's leave it. As well as the defensive walls, I'm just going to throw down some slatty boys over some of the windows. And again, if we place the slatty boys down first and then the vines over it, they kind of intermingle together. Aye, what's a lot more natural? And with that, guys, it's pretty much a rinse and repeat process. Just go around, use defensive walls or any other junk you can think of, place down your vines and just see what you come up with. The world is your oyster, as they say. Oh, I almost did forget. I want the back wall there. Again, you're going to repeat the process that you did at the front with the vines. I don't I don't have to say it for the 19th time, do I? No, of course I don't. I will point out though, Mon Petit Fleurs, if you put your doorway in the same position as mine, you're not going to be able to cover it with vines. To be, you know, 100% transparent with you, you're not going to be able to place a doorway anywhere and put vines over it, unless you come up with something creative like glitching through the wall, for example. Now, I did try this, and to put it simply, vines are a bastard. Not only do they not let you walk through a doorway, they also stop you from glitching through things as well. So yeah, that could be a little bit of a problem, but we're just going to use the ostrich method. Head, sand, bury. Beautiful. So now we come down to the finishing touches, and all I'm going to be doing with this is building a graveyard on the side of the church with a little storage room, which I'm going to put all my crafting benches in. Now, this isn't technical whatsoever. All I'm using is this set of railings here, and I'm quite simply going to build a rectangle off the side of my church. My storage room, the way I made this is by building foundations out from the church itself until I got to this position here, and that just guarantees that you've got a nice centred, you know, building thing yeah it's, it's not going to be on the piss is what i'm trying to tell you now you can make this thing as big or as small as you want it i'm just going for a two foundation job eh? it's more than enough job done now at the front here i'm just going to throw down some brambles just to you know scruffy up the landscape a little bit make it a little bit more 
blendy in it with the church, if that makes any sense. I'm also going to throw down two trees at either side of the building here. Now, these are just to hide them vines that are <laughs> overhanging the top arch. No, it's not perfect. And no, I 100% agree with you. But if you have a better solution, let me know down in comments. I'm actually genuinely intrigued to see if there is a method for this. So just before I show you what I've done with the place, there's one final little touch we need to do on this doorway here. Mm hmm yep yeah. oh god that is beautiful absolutely fantastic yep yeah, that is spot on and that is it for the structure now you can decorate this any way that you want to do but i'm just going to show you some footage now of what i came up with and yeah i hope you like it and you get some ideas from it Right, so what did you think of my decor? Again, let me know down in comments. Was it great? Was it shit? Either way, I want to know. While we're on the subject of comments, actually, I'm guessing I'm going to see some asking where I got the Snowy Gaster from. I've actually done a video on how to tame animals. I'll leave a link for that in the top corner of this video now, if you want to, you know, get one for yourself. As ever, I'd like to say a massive thank you to all my channel members and all my Patreons. The extra support is much appreciated. If that's anything that you guys are interested in, there's a link in the description. If that's not your kind of thing though, at least consider hitting that subscribe button and that like button. We do 476 videos every single week, so yeah, if you're into that content, <laughs> why are you not, you know, why are you not hitting them magical buttons? Well, TNG, it's because you're a twat. Anyhow, that is it from me. As we say in the north, I'll love you and leave you, and I'll catch you at next one. Have fun, everybody.